Each season, Guys Telling Stories seeks out fascinating people with a good story to tell. I'm Bill Easton. The man next to me is Rich Douglas. We're a couple of guys that love a good story. Our quest today takes us to the middle of the ocean. This is Guys Telling Stories. All right, Mid- middle of the ocean, middle though. Of the ocean. <laughs> nice, yeah, nice. Ocean. Captain Kate is on a cruise ship, and we are going to speak to her from the ship. She is in the middle of the ocean. So, well done, Bill. All right, good huh? to hear. Glad I'm right. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, welcome to the show, and we, as you can tell, are very excited about our guest today, Captain Kate McHugh. She is the first American female captain of a cruise ship. That's cool. Oh, that's great. So we're connecting with our guest, who's in international waters. I couldn't be more excited. That's cool. That's amazing. We love, we love these cruises, too, by the way. For those of you that don't know that out there. All right, let's get to try at home. Yeah, one more thing that we love. What else do we love, Bill? Oh, we love Tile. Tell me about Tile. Tile is a Bluetooth tracker for your keys, your wallet, your phone, your car. like Whatever you want to do, it will help you find it. Rich, don't you hate it when you lose stuff? I can't stand losing anything. Well, Tile may have the solution for you. It is a tiny little square that attaches to anything you don't want to lose. And the Bluetooth tracker will ring loudly if you misplace something. It's easy to use, and there's an app that tracks it where you had it last. You know, you could use this for your luggage when you're traveling. True story, when you're on a cruise. Yeah, you could, you know, put your Tile. When we go together, like, <laughs> what bar is Rich at? And I'll be like, oh, there he is. I was thinking I'd put it in my luggage in case it gets misplaced, but I like your style. Well, Maybe you have your luggage with you. <laughs> well, anyway, listeners, you get 35% off your tile purchase by going to guystellingstories.com, clicking Try at Home. Guystellingstories.com, click on the Try at Home and get 35% off your tile purchase. Rich, what do you got? I was talking to one of our listeners and they were saying, hey, Rich, how can I use that Amazon button? Can you tell me about that? How does that work? And, you know, I looked at her and I said, Amazon's a free way for you to help support this show. Yeah, it's easy and it's free. You just head to our website and you find the little Amazon link whenever you're online shopping. And you click it, it takes you to Amazon, you do your shopping like you normally would. You can be buying a new bathing suit for summer, or maybe you're getting some flip-flops or Mm -hmm. a beach ball. Whatever it is, you can help us and get the stuff you want simply by going to guystellingstories.com and clicking on our Amazon link before you shop. It's free for you to do, and it really helps us out. It helps with... You know, the web page and posting the episodes and anything. So if you're online shopping, just remember, head to our website first and click our Amazon link. We really appreciate it. All right, let's get to our guest, Captain Kate. Captain Kate. It's going to be so exciting to talk to her and hear how she came from being a young girl growing up in America to being right now, literally, in the middle of the ocean on a cruise ship. Yep, cruise ship. She's the captain of the ship. Captain. All right, well... Let's talk to Captain Kate. Captain Kate, welcome to Guys Telling Stories. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Sure thing. Glad yeah. to have you. Yeah, now it is a feat of modern technology that we're even talking right now because, correct me if I'm wrong, you're in international waters as we speak? <laughs> That is correct. I'm actually right between New York and Bermuda, about uh, 300 miles from each right now. Awesome. Yeah, what, what ship are you currently captain of? I am sailing on the Celebrity Summit, and uh, we're doing the run between Bayonne, New Jersey, Cape Liberty, and Bermuda. We're up here all summer. Well, before we get too far into it, uh, Captain Kate, can you tell people where they might be able to learn a little bit more about you online, maybe your social media? Sure, absolutely. Um, I have an Instagram, at Captain Kate McHugh, which uh, kind of gives an inside look into the captain's life, as well as our current cruises, past cruises, and um, some of the highlights along the way. And uh, my my cat also has an Instagram account, <laughs> at Bug Naked, and I bring that up because she's actually sailing with me, and uh, nine times out of ten, if you ask anybody who's more popular, they definitely say Bug is, so she's out there as well. That's awesome. You know, we always like to take listeners on a journey of your life, and how did you get started on this path? I mean, did you grow up by the water? Tell us a little bit about, like, where you grew up. Well, I, I didn't in particular. I was born in San Francisco, but my family moved around a lot uh, with my dad's job. He was working for Bechtel, and so I lived in Michigan and California, Georgia, Texas, uh, the wow. U.K. for a bit. But when I was 12 years old, 
Uh, my parents took my brother and me on our very first cruise. It was a four-day cruise over Thanksgiving holiday, and it was down to the Bahamas. And I don't actually remember seeing my parents at all for the four <laughs> days because uh, I was off having a blast. And when I got off the ship and we were packing the car to drive home, I said to my dad, you know, I know exactly what I want to be when I grow up. And my dad said, what's that? And I said, you know the person that plans all the fun events on board the ship? Yes. And he said, uh, the cruise director? I said, yeah, I want to be the cruise director. So I said, um, he said, you can do anything you want in the world, including drive the thing. And the funny thing is, is my dad and my mom were sailing with me during my first contract. And I was standing on stage telling the audience, the guests on board, this particular story. And afterwards, I came down from the stage, and I met my parents, and we went to dinner. And my dad said, you know, that's not the whole story. And I said, well, what do you mean? What am I missing? He said, well, when you said that you wanted to be the cruise director, I knew you couldn't sing, and I knew you couldn't dance, so I hoped you'd be able to drive the thing. <laughs> I know how. He's right about the singing, but I know how to dance. So... <laughs> It goes from being the most supportive dad to, I, I know I can dance. <laughs> That's great. Well, yeah, but I'm thinking, too, most kids, they can maybe pick up a sport or an instrument, or maybe they get into something like you, like you mentioned, maybe dance or gymnastics. But when you set your mind to something like getting on a cruise ship to be the director or the captain, I mean, how did dad support you in those initial steps? Well, what's wonderful is my dad had actually wanted to go to sea, um, and he went into the Peace Corps. That's where he met my mom, actually, in Ethiopia. And when they came back uh, to the States, he had actually applied to go to California Maritime Academy, which is where I went to school. But they told him he was too old. So he'd already done the research on where to go in order to get a license to sail. And um, so when it came time to pick a college, he actually reminded me of that conversation that we, that we had when I was 12, and um, and mentioned, you know, I know a place where you can go. And at the time, um, he presented California Maritime Academy. It was actually becoming part of the Cal State University system. So it's a regular four-year university with the emphasis on maritime. So I was taking, when I went to school, my four years of business administration courses for my BSBA. And then at the same time, I was taking my nautical courses, um, Rules of the Road, Celestial Navigation, Marlin Spike, Small Craft Operations, all that, and going on training cruises during the summer. And at the end of the four years, I got a license to sail anything from tugboat to super tanker, everything in between, as well as a business administration degree. And the idea was that down the road, when I decided I didn't want to sail any longer, I had this business degree to fall back on, or vice versa. So it's one of the best-kept secrets as far as universities go, I believe, in the state. That's great. Yeah, you know, we are talking to you from Buffalo, New York, and, and if you've never been here, or maybe you've been to Niagara Falls, it's only a hop, skip, and a jump, but we're so close to another country, uh, one of the you know wonders of the world. And uh, <laughs> the only boat that's coming to mind for me is we just got a few years back a bike ferry, and it <laughs> it literally that's right. it literally carries your bicycle and you from one little side of a canal to the other. I think it costs something like a dollar, but I noticed they had quite a few younger employees, and I was thinking similar to getting your student driving license or something like that. Did you find yourself on any smaller ships before you were, you know, captain of the larger ones? Oh, yeah. I actually started working on banana boats, taking bananas between Ecuador and California and found out pretty quickly that that's not where I wanted to be because you can keep the bananas, the snakes, the spiders. I wanted to be on cruise ships. And so I had actually applied to every single cruise company in the industry. And this was just when the Internet was taking off. So I had sent my resume and my CV via snail mail. And I hadn't heard anything back. And I was working on land, waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally, I changed my resume and I applied to be a bartender with a cruise line. And when they got my resume and they looked at it, they said, well, this lady's not qualified to be a bartender because I've never been a bartender in my life. However, she is qualified to be on the bridge of our ship. So they forwarded it to the correct people. And the next thing you know, I got a phone call. And then um, I started with that company as a third mate, but they only had two ships. So there wasn't a whole lot of room for growth or promotion. So I looked for a company that did. And at the time, Royal Caribbean was building their Radiance class ship and their Voyager class ship. They had lots of ships coming out. 
So lots of room for growth. And I applied with Royal. I got accepted as a second officer. And then I worked my way up from the smallest ships to the largest and from the bottom position as second officer to first officer deck, first officer navigation, first officer safety, chief officer safety, staff captain. And then in uh, June of 2015, I was sailing with my husband on the Quantum of the Seas. He was chief engineer and I was sailing as a guest. And I got a phone call when we were actually over in Asia. And, uh, and he said, it's, uh, it's the office calling. And I thought, uh-oh. Usually that means you're going back to work a little bit earlier, which I don't normally mind. But mm-hmm. um, it was uh, from Lisa lutoff Perla, who is our president and CEO, the first female president and CEO in the cruise industry. And she offered me the position as master on celebrity cruises, to which I said, um, pardon my French, but hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> now help me out here. I know the chief engineer, and I have a follow-up about your husband's question, because we actually got the chance to meet uh, chief engineer a while back, and I want to tell that story later. But what is master of the ship? So master of the ship, um, same as the captain. The title of captain can actually be shared, but there's only one master of the ship, and the master is like the CEO on board. So I have different departments. I have the hotel department. I have the deck department and the engine department, and they report directly to me. So I kind of act as the CEO on board. Um, Safety is the one concern. And then, um, you know, of course, taking care of our guests and making sure that they have the best vacation experience is my priority. Yeah, that's, I think, something a lot of people don't realize is not only are you in charge of the navigation of the ship, but also the hotel department, deck safety, and then a bunch of other people are reporting to you, too. And so you definitely got to be someone that can wear a lot of different hats. Let me ask you this. What is a typical day like for you? Well, the best part about my job is that no day is the same as the last. It's always different people, different place, different weather conditions. I mean, everything changes. So a typical day at sea, uh, I wake up in the morning, there's a a bit of emails to go through, but the sea days are my favorite because I basically have a captive audience. One of my favorite things to do is go to one of the highly populated areas on the ship, and what I find here is Cafe El Baccio, the coffee bar, Mm -hmm. and uh, I like to go behind the counter, and that way I can have some interaction with the guests coming and going. There's uh, lots of cocktail parties that we have tonight i've got photos and i'll go and do the intros to the show and the theater um doing different events meet and greet with the new crew that signed on and yeah that that fills the day and then of course when we're in port i do like to go ashore and i like to try out the excursions that we offer to our guests because i will never ever recommend anything that i haven't tried myself so i need to I go out there for research purposes. (laughs) That's uh, one of the perks of the job for sure. There's so many excursions. I mean, on my bucket list was swim with dolphins. And we were actually able to do that a few years back. And we have the pictures to prove it. It was one of those experiences that I just, you should see the you look on Photoshop my face. You Photoshop in the dolphins? No. You are very excited <laughs> here, by the way. I haven't, I haven't got to ask one question. <laughs> you got to jump in, Bill. You got to jump in. But uh, go ahead. Tell what was your favorite excursion? Oh, boy. We did, the, um, we did that cooking uh, thing in Cozumel. Uh, it was like a cooking class. And it was. this is probably 10 years ago, me and my wife. And... The amount of tequila that they gave us while we're doing this was not, not it, it, you didn't know this was happening. You're just supposed to learn how to cook some Mexican food. And, and they're like, oh, they went like tequila. And of course, we raised our hand. It just kept coming and coming and shot after shot after shot. It was a great time. We didn't feel great. Uh Walking back to the boat, but uh, well, because you were sad it was over. Oh my goodness, no, I, I, no, I was, <laughs> I was actually kind of happy at that point. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, and Captain Kate, what about you? Do you have like a top two or three excursions? My favorite, I, I really like to do the cultural tours. Uh, usually the island trips because you get to see so much in one in one go. Um, I am an avid diver, so anytime you can get me in the water, whether it's scuba or snorkeling or free diving, anything to do with the water, absolutely love it. 
It's nice that you embrace these uh, experiences and jump behind the coffee bar and, and serve the guests and talk to them. That's great. That is pretty cool. I, I can tell you, I would, I would, we love we love the cappuccinos and oh, the espressos. Yeah. So that'd be fun to uh, to have the captain be serving us. Uh, that would, you know, that, I, I'd ask if maybe I could jump behind there. Yeah. You know, well, uh, at least you'll ask this time. Don't actually let me make the coffee, but I can I can run the cards and I can serve the pastries. That's as far as I've gotten in training so far. <laughs> gotcha. Well, you know, if I could bring it back a little bit. Is there a story behind uh, you getting promoted by your CEO, Lisa, to the current position you have now? Yeah, actually, I met Lisa. I had the opportunity to meet her during a captain's conference when I was still at Royal Caribbean. And um, and then when I came or when she came over to Celebrity Cruises and they were looking for someone to promote for for the position, um, she said that, you know, I stuck a chord with her and um so she, when she called me up, I mean that was that made it even all the more special um, with her being the first female president and CEO um, in the cruise industry. To, to have that come from her was pretty incredible. And actually, when we were on the phone, because Father's Day was just around the corner, and um, I knew this promotion meant a lot to me, but I knew it meant uh, almost more to my parents. I had actually asked Lisa. If I could tell my father, because I wasn't supposed to tell anybody about the promotion except for my husband, obviously, because he was standing right there. But I asked if I could tell my dad before it went public, and I and I asked if I could give him the letter that she had sent to me um, about the promotion. And she said, of course, that's absolutely fine, do that. And so when I got home from the trip sailing with my husband, uh, I had the letter in an envelope, and uh, on Father's Day... I gave the letter to my dad, and I was, you know, uncorking a bottle of champagne, and he started to read the letter out loud, and he was going line by line, but it wasn't really registering on him until he got about two-thirds of the way down, and it mentioned the promotion. And he stopped reading out loud, and he looked up at me, and then he looked down at the letter, looked up at me again, and his, his face, he just had tears streaming down his face, and my poor mom was sitting right next to him, and she's going, you know, what's happening? <laughs> because I, I didn't. And so, you know, he, he, uh, I actually, I have it on, on, uh, I taped it and I put it on my Instagram, um, cause that was something special that, that we could share. So they're very, very proud. You know, let me ask you, you mentioned, uh, your husband was a chief engineer and is he somebody that you end up actually working with or is he on a separate ship? Um, you know, <laughs> do, do your schedules align if you know what I mean? No. We um, So I do three months on, three months off, and he's currently doing uh, 10 weeks on, 10 weeks off, and he's still with Royal Caribbean. He's actually going to build the, their new ship, the Symphony of the Seas, as chief engineer and take that out of the yard. But um, he's coming to sail with me next cruise. He'll spend my last two weeks on board with me, which is great because he is the ultimate captain's wife. He's just a total diva. He walks around, you know, telling people, do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> but... um he could, but he's uh, he can't work with me because then I'd be the boss at work and at home, and the poor bugger needs. To <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that, that's understandable. That's uh, I give him I give him credit in the sense that we have a special place in our heart for the chief engineer because um, I'll tell the chocolate story. Sure, go and for it. Jump in on this too. Oh my god, this was great. On our first cruise together. We went with our wives, and we had to stay one night, I believe, in Fort Lauderdale uh, right before the cruise started. So say we flew in early, and we got there on Friday. And we just had a little bit of uh, time to kill, so we were walking around, and we found a little shop. I think it was like a dollar-type store where we bought some funny foam animal hats that just had an elastic band, almost looked like a visor, but you were wearing almost like a little... They're for kids. Yeah, yeah like a little kid. They're not for adults. No. <laughs> Like a little kid turtle or, or uh, what is that, like a parrot or something? Flamingo. A flamingo. Yeah, Don and a flamingo. And so we were so excited to go on our first cruise together, and we had heard about uh, Michael's Club, mm -hmm. and we just wanted to go s kind of run around the ship wearing these silly hats. And we ended up meeting one of the um, Captain's Club, uh, what is it called, Captain's Club director, and he was in Michael's Club, but it was closed for some sort of cleaning or something. And he was mm -hmm. so nice to us. His name was Bruce. Well, he wasn't nice to us at first. He, he was like, what are you guys doing in here? Where, they were having a meeting. Oh, we interrupted yeah. their meeting. Yeah. yeah. So he had to like be, be the boss. And then he chased us down. 
And then I was like, I had to, I had to do that. But then he was really friendly. And he was super friendly. And we had on these funny looking hats. And he goes, oh, I just love your hats. And I had found chocolates at the store that were, must have been basically Valentine's Day chocolates. And I was like, you know what? If we see interesting people or we're just kind of give them out as gifts. So we ha- I had in my bag a box of chocolates. And so I go, Bruce, you were so nice. You know, these chocolates are for you. And he was over the moon. He goes, ooh, chocolates. Mm. And he kind of like put his fingers together and was so excited. And so the next couple days went by and we had so much fun just relaxing and getting to know the ship. And we get a little invitation from Bruce to meet the chief engineer and his wife who was must be traveling like your husband might the next time around. And it was their last leg. She had been on for two weeks and we were going to get a chance to have dinner with them. And we just always tell that story. I guess, you know, just, I guess the moral of the story is, you know, travel with funny hats and chocolates and you'll never know who you'll meet or where you go. <laughs> and you'll go far. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So maybe we can get into a little bit of a, a challenge or a struggle. We always like to recognize that, you know, it's not easy street. So, you know, on your way to this promotion or maybe since being promoted, is there a struggle you had to overcome that you've ultimately been better for? Um, You know, the funny thing is, is when I was coming up through the ranks, I never even thought about challenges. And when I was promoted and I started doing some interviews and that question kept coming up and I was thinking to myself, the fact that we have 66 different nationalities on board the Celebrity Summit, for example. The fact that we work with so many different nationalities, everyone is a minority of some sort, whether it's race, religion, cultural background, sexual orientation, whatever it is. And that puts us on a level playing field. And there's kind of an unspoken respect between us. And I think the key to my success, and I would not be where I am without it, is surrounding myself with diversity. Because I think, um, you know, nobody else on board the ship looked at it like, oh, we have a female captain. It was just normal. And that's what I've been surrounded with my entire career because I've always worked with international companies. So as far as struggles, you know, I I say like learning 2,400 people's names in a cruise, that's probably the, the hardest part of my job. Or going home on vacation because I love being on board so much. But when I look back at the 21 years I've been at sea, I don't see any challenges and I don't see any hard times or struggles. I just see it as all fun and and the best time of my life. And God willing, I've got another 40 years in me uh, to keep doing this at sea because that's what it is. It is fun. My job is a blast. And I don't even look at it as a job. That's amazing. One of the recent announcements that your company has made is the uh, Celebrity Edge. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the the Edge class? So the Edge is coming out next year at the end of the 2018. The first thing that uh, makes them so special is that they were designed in a 3D imagination lab. Um, and so they're able to change things and see the aesthetics of things before it's even put into production. Um, so that's the first thing that makes it special. It, uh, it has some incredible advances. For example, the um, infinite balconies. So when you walk in a stateroom now and you're in a balcony cabin, you have um, basically some glass doors that separate you from outside. But that space, you know, if you're not using your balcony outside and the doors are closed, you kind of lose that space a bit. So the infinite balconies, what they do is your cabin, your stateroom goes all the way up to the glass, and then the glass will come down to make it into a balcony stateroom, or the glass can go up, but you don't lose that space, which oh, is amazing. There's cool. also the, uh, the magic carpet, which is a floating platform, so you can use it for tendering uh, down on the water line. You can take it up and, and use it as a, um, a lounge or a disco. You can have it as a restaurant, and it basically floats up and down the side of the ship. So that's something that's very new and exciting um, coming to the, to the brand. And then, you know, we look at the Godmother. I, I don't know if you're familiar with um, the Godmother that was announced for The Edge, but it's Malala Yousafzai, who was the young lady that um, she... She 
basically went up against the Taliban and uh, stood up for her right to go to school as a young girl. And um, we're very proud to have her um, as the godmother of EDGE and to work with the Malala Fund um, for the next couple of years, which is really, really exciting. I definitely remember that story. Yeah, she's Um, actually a part of the University of Buffalo speaker series, so she'll be in town uh, very soon. Great. So it's kind of an interesting oh, kind that's of excellent. coincidence. Yeah. Did you get a chance to you know meet her in person? I only asked because that would be incredible. Not yet, but thank you for putting that out into the world because that would be such an honor. Yeah, absolutely. Well, absolutely. maybe we can make it happen. We, uh, we can check the schedule, maybe go meet her ourselves and mm-hmm. uh, put two and two together. Sure. That'd be, that'd be great. She's the youngest Nobel Peace Prize winner of all time, which is, uh, I mean, that just tells you what kind of person she is. Ah, incredible. Well, you know, we are coming to that point in the interview, and I'm loving how it's going so far, where we sort of look ahead a little bit. And, you know, do you have a vision for yourself in the near future? Or is She's there working anything? 40 more years. I know, 40 more years. That's I what mean, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> if, you know, no, um, no timeline, but yeah, just curious, you know, next couple decades. Well, as I mentioned, this is the greatest job on earth. And I think one of the things that you see is once people get into this chair, they stick around for quite a long time. And the captain is the highest position that I can have, obviously, on board. But the next thing for me down the road, um, you know, keeping edge class in mind or future ships that are coming out, there is no greater honor than to take a ship from the time that the keel is laid until it is brought into operation. It's like having your own child. I mean, there's something that you saw it from the idea and then into fruition. Um, that is kind of what I would think would be the uh, the next big thing. I get to watch my husband going through it, you know, with uh, the symphony, um, with him going into France and, and taking it a ship as the chief engineer. It's a similar experience you know you're as high as you can go on the ship but then to actually be part of that new build process is something really special well cool good luck hopefully hopefully you get to do that uh sooner than later (laughs) and uh kind of tongue-in-cheek here what do you see for uh bug your cat in the in the near future Bug's gonna grow some hair (laughs) (laughs) so i see uh, a nap followed by a nap followed by dinner and another nap (laughs) Exciting, exciting times. Wow. Uh, that, poor, poor, poor bug. You know, a lot of people who are going to listen to this might have dreams of their own, and maybe their trailblazers can, you know, kind of go off on their own path. Maybe they'll follow in your footsteps. So, any advice you'd give to somebody starting out in an industry that maybe has some barriers to overcome for whoever they are? The number one thing is being yourself. Um, when I was going up through the ranks, when I was promoted from chief officer to staff captain, I was sent to Sweden for, they do this psychological evaluation to make sure that you're sound and, um, and you're ready for the position. So I went through this series of tests, and at the end of the test, I sat down, and the gentleman that was conducting them, he said, everything looks great, your scores were amazing, uh, you've got this, but there is one thing that I noticed, and that's that you smile too much. And I thought, okay, well, that's not too bad. I can deal with that. So when I was promoted to master and I was coming to the ship, my husband reminded me of those results. And he said, remember, don't smile too much. (laughs) The thing is, when I got on the ship and I was going through, you know, the the job and it, it was a new company, it was a new ship, it was a new position, I was having such a hard time and focusing so much on not smiling that I wasn't enjoying it. So after the first two weeks, I said, sod it, I'm going to be myself. And it has been smooth sailing ever since. You know, you don't have to think about it. And when you enjoy something so much, just let it shine. You don't have to think twice about it. But I also think that in this day and age where we're so used to instant gratification, you also need to stick it out because there will be some ups and there will be some downs. But you need to actually try things and stick it out a little bit longer to see how they work out. Because the longer you're in a situation, the more experience you gain. Whether it's something that you're taking note you would do in the future or you wouldn't do in the future, it's all experience. So stick it out, um, but try as many things as you can at the same time. 
Make sense? It does make sense. And I've been cruising a little longer with my wife than 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 Rich and Court. We just got started earlier, you know. And it's nice to see that you're you're being yourself. And I think it's it's refreshing that uh, that you're doing it that way. And that's what I would like to see. I want someone. I want someone enjoying their job when when I meet them. It, it makes me happy. Yeah, and, and one of the last couple of interviews of our second season, we were talking to a singer-songwriter who said he would recommend this book, Big Magic. And, you know, one of the chapters in the book is about permission. Now, a lot of people in life wait for permission to be themselves or to go after their dreams. And sometimes you just can give yourself that permission. And it sounds like once you finally embrace that, you were you, you started to really enjoy you know, the career that you've chosen and worked so hard for. And uh, I know Bill said it's like, you know, kind of refreshing. I, I kind of would compliment with that and say it's kind of contagious too. It makes mm-hmm. me want to be Definitely. myself, you know, in my, in my role as well. So, so thank you for that. Winding this thing down, Captain Kate, is there anything else we should ask you? Any stories that maybe you came prepared to tell that maybe we just didn't get to yet? To all your listeners, I'd love to have them out on a, a cruise. And if you've never tried cruising, this is the time to do it. I live in Las Vegas, and I pay to go see shows down on the Strip. But we have that caliber of entertainment on board our ships. We did 18 shows in 18 months, new cutting-edge shows. They're not the cookie cutter that you see you know, on other cruise lines. These are, are really incredible shows from the costumes to um, the singers, dancers, aerialists, orchestra, all of that. So, and then the food. We're known with celebrity for our food and our wine. Uh, we have partnerships with incredible wineries around the world. And our food, um, you know, from our specialty restaurants to what you find in the dining room. And then we also have uh, additional restaurants for our sweets. If you like food, if you like wine, if you like entertainment, and if you want to see the world, come on a cruise. I'm ready to go. Yeah, I'm we're ready. we're ready. This, this, we're is probably, <laughs> this is probably a terrible idea <laughs> because now I just want to. Now I just want to go. That, no, yeah, just the sooner the better. <laughs> you know, I know Bill has one. He has a future cruise booked. Uh, just mm-hmm. you know, for some you know distant date, and you're just gonna have to bump that date up. Maybe just do another one. Yep, that sounds great. Well, Captain Kate, as we wind this thing down, could maybe you remind people where they can follow you online or learn more about celebrity. Sure, you can find all of our information on our ships and our itineraries at celebritycruises.com. And I am on Instagram at Captain Kate Vicu. And let's plug uh, Bugs Instagram too. What yeah, what's Bugs again? Bugs is Bug Naked. At Bug Naked on Instagram, that's B U G as in Bug. Awesome. And you'll get it as soon as you see the first picture. Yep, yep, the world famous cat. Well, Captain Kate, thanks so much for sharing your stories. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on, guys. Sure thing. Hopefully we catch you on uh, on one of our cruises. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're right in your back door. You know, you, you guys come on down to Bayonne anytime. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. Captain Kate McHugh. That was great. And I, I told her I would do something for her. She mentioned it off the air. What's that? So I'm going to do it right now. Celebrity Summit Captain Kate <laughs> Captain K. There you go. Uh, she requested a American Ninja Warrior introduction. Yes. I'm glad you remember. I'm glad she listened to it. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> she listened. Yeah, she. Captain Kate said she had listened before, and uh, we really appreciate that. And I appreciate her sharing her stories. You know, well, take. Sounds like she has tons of time to listen to us. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know how she managed to to actually listen to a few episodes. Uh, she. Yeah, it seems like her job is 24 seven. You know, three months on, three months off, but. You know, if you guys haven't checked her out on Instagram, you should because it makes me want to just go on vacation to get on a cruise, I, cruise ship and the whole uh, time. Yep, the whole I time. just I I had my phone here and I was you know like well, I should just look up a cruise. Yeah, well, you know, when I was thinking, I tried to sort of say it when we were talking. You know, think about the bus driver, the teacher, the nurse. I mean, of course, they're not on a mega cruise ship. They're not maybe necessarily in tropical environments. But, you know, those, those, there's those moments in your day where you could just capture that cool little picture of something, the sun setting. Maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe it's a, a coworker, you know, just having some fun and, and enjoying life. And so, you know, I want to give myself the permission to do that. Thank you, Me Captain too. Kate. Yeah. I'm going on a cruise next week. See you. Hey, want to thank our friends at Tile. Tile, the world's best-selling Bluetooth tracker. That is the wor- in the world. That's right. The best-selling Bluetooth tracker in the entire world. Hey, it attaches to anything, by the way, so you can't lose it. 
You get 35% off your tile purchase by going to guystellingstories.com and clicking on Try at Home. So get your 35% off your tile purchase now. And quick reminder that you can help us and support the show for free simply by going to guystellingstories.com and clicking on our Amazon link before you shop on Amazon. Really helps us out. And it's simple and free for you. That's guystellingstories.com. Click on our Amazon link to support the show and help us out for free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It helps so much. We really appreciate it. Yep. We do. All right. So you're saying you're going on a cruise. No, I can't go on a cruise next week. I got a hockey game coming up here. Oh, that's right. All right. Yeah, I Couple guess a little, away. a little preview. We'll talk about that next week. You know, guys, this season has been going really, really well. And we really appreciate all the feedback and all the downloads and listens and shares. So, you know, if you like Captain Kate, follow her on Instagram. Let her, let her know in the comment section that you, uh, you listen to her episode. That'd be great. All right, guys. As always, I'm Rich Douglas. I'm Bill Easton. All right. Till next time. <laughs>